Oh yes. Can you feel it? Spring is coming. Today, February 28th, it's like 55 degrees out, sunny out. I'm at a creek in Middle Tennessee. I had a meeting uh, at a TWRA this morning to do a podcast. And um, I got to see the uh, world record smallmouth bass replica. Thing is a giant, I cannot believe how big it was. It is so big looking at the replica. But it really got me in the mood to go for some smallmouth. And some of the, around the National Area, some of my favorite smallmouth creeks. Today, we're getting in the creek and we're waiting. I got my waders on. It's pretty cold, uh, um, but we're gonna learn, or hopefully I'm gonna be able to teach you and show you how to catch some early spring smallmouth. What are they doing? They're starting to move. You know, it might still be cold, but the days are already getting longer. The fish know it. Smallmouth get active um, a lot earlier than like some of the other fish, but this works for basically all bass, if it works out today. Well, the water is up probably a foot, man. Maybe a little less than a foot higher than normal. And I'm sure it's still really cold, but it is clear and looking really good. I hope there's some fish active. I think there, I think there'll be something. I think I'll be able to catch something today. I'm just not sure what. Man, this looks nice out here. Had a hit. Don't know what it was. Didn't feel real big. I thought it had it though. Definitely a little thump there. First bite I've gotten. And it was definitely a bite. Got it. Am I gonna get a fish in today? Oh, guess what it is? Yes, yes, yes. It's a small mouth. Boom, boom, boom. Dude, I've been missing these fish. I have been missing these creek fish so much. I cannot wait for them to get really active. Oh, this fish is cold. And he hit a swim bait twice. That means they are a little bit active. Oh, that's just a little like eight or 10 inch, but that's what's fun. I like throwing a lure that can catch this and also can catch a four pounder. And there's four pounders that live in here. I need to catch one. Beautiful fish. Just everything about this place. Beautiful fish, beautiful water. I think hopefully we can get a few more. All right, I've made it down to this next, like really uh, big hole. And I changed to the Helgramite because uh, I think that it's probably the better option. I haven't seen a lot of really aggressive fish. I haven't even seen any fish swimming around. I had two bites on the swim bait and I was reeling it really slow. So I'm hoping there's some fish somewhere. I'm gonna come across them where they're at and I can get them with the Helgramite. With that water being up, it might be a little harder. But also, sometimes that water's up, they get some feeding a little more. But there's a lot more water to cast at. Oh! Oh, I know that was a bite. Yes! There's one! There's one! I knew they'd be in here. Or I had a really good feeling they'd be right here. Spring's coming on and they're gonna start feeding. And I've noticed they, they feed up in a, in the current area, right under a, where a drop off is before a big deep pool. I think there's gonna be some bigger ones down there. I've been getting a bunch of little hits. It may be from this little guy, but that's smallmouth number two. It was worth staying here. I'm gonna stay in this area and fish it for a little while longer. Yep, there's 
going. I thought there'd be some fish down there. This one is a large mouth. That's two. That wasn't too long after that. Yeah, that's a large mouth. So second fish from just drifting right here. Just drifting this Helgramite, casting it up, letting it kind of work down, pick up the slack, let it fall, pick up the slack, let it fall. And when they hit that, usually it's a little thud. You just feel a little thump and they got a hold of it. Most times, sometimes they don't, but little ones, big ones, they'll just take it. and just gonna be, boom, got it. Did I get that one? Got it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're moving up in size. Hey, a little bit bigger. That's, oh, that, that's not a bad one. Um, that's right where I had a hit. Made a couple casts over there. Right, I got you. Nice. Hey, hey, that's a pretty one there. About a 12 incher. What are told? Whoa, I didn't ever feel him hit. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Nice. Okay, he wasn't, he's not that much bigger than hit so much harder. I was just picking it up and I felt weight. Is he? How is that guy so much stronger? He looks, he's like thicker than that last one. Man, these fish. This is why I love this. I have been so waiting for this to happen. Now, you can. I guess you can catch some of these, but a lot of them that you can catch them in the wintertime are further away from me. I don't get a chance to go to them as much. But uh, whenever I can get to them, they usually is worth it. Yes! He's in the current. But I think he's a solid fish. Okay, not as big as I thought. But we got a fighter. They're where I'm hoping they're at. I mean, they're where I'm thinking they're at. This is what I've learned in my years and years. Just kidding. I've only really been chasing smallmouth for a couple years, maybe three. And I've learned that in the spring, I don't know if they do this in the winter, but definitely in the spring, if there's a current coming into a deeper pole, cast i'm casting up here and drifting my lure they they're down there at the bottom like they're down there sitting and you wouldn't think they'd be right there and you have to get your lure down lower in the summer they're going to be a little higher more out of the way on like those current breaks over there that's like a perfect looking eddy right there boom you boom hit right there and they're sitting over there most of the time when I catch them early in the year, before it gets warm, they're down in this water. I don't even remember how I came across it, just like messing around. But it's something I figured out on my own, just messing around casting. And then I like tested it out a few times. And this is the beginning of March. And there's already fish down in here. Like this is strong current. And they're down there sitting. I have to drift my lure down into it. Most of the time, I'm not gonna catch them on a moving bait that much, as much as something like this Helgramite drifting it in there. 
I think we've gone far as I want to go. Let's go back upstream. And I'm really gonna focus on those spots where I caught some fish. I kind of missed the early ones because I was throwing a swim bait. So now we're gonna throw something a little heavier and drift it down in there. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's what I want. <laughs> oh man, it's so fun to fight these guys. Come on. Come on. Boom! There's our first over a pound. I uh, came back, I was coming back upstream. I got a uh, one eighth ounce jig head and my four inch yum dinger. That's the um, uh, bubblegum swirl, whatever it's called. I love that color. And this is a place where I caught about five fish. And, and uh, I think it's a little heavier jig head. Everything kind of just helped it get down there and get it. But that's a good 14 inch smallmouth. I had a really good feeling I was gonna figure them out finally and get a few and this right here is just a good solid one this is the kind of fish you would like to get you always you want that giant but this is just a good one to get 14 inch probably a pound maybe a pound and a quarter this guy's pretty thick oh yeah okay yeah this color may be crazy looking but i just i've caught so many fish on it that i figured i'd throw it on today and try and sure enough that guy had no problem hitting that thing even in whoa whoa no way that's another good one. No way. Even in this clear water, I got it muddied up a little bit. <laughs> back to back. I think it's that extra weight what really did it is getting it down up there. I don't know, the sun's popping out a little bit too. Maybe that's going on, that's helping out. Dude, two back to back. Right where I was thinking they should be. I caught my little more ones down this way. Those, bigger, those guys were up there, so I think this heavier jig head is getting it down quicker and that, there may be some more fish up there, or at least some of these other deep holes. It's amazing how many fish, I don't even remember how it was, five to seven fish probably, from right here, right here, in the swift part. And that deep hole back there goes around that bend. I fished all over it, it looks so good. And not a single bite back there. Um, that may be back there as it warms up, but it's funny how there's, that's what I love about streams. There's usually a feeding spot. You got, if you find where they're feeding at, um, and then you could, sometimes it doesn't matter what kind of lure, but if you get in their area, you have a right lure or a right presentation in their zone, you know, you can catch a lot of fish. And a lot of times it's just figuring it out exactly what it is, how to, how to present it. And every deep, every deep hole could be a little different. Um, this one's a little swifter through here. There could be one with a little a slower current. So I definitely got this one figured out. I caught seven fish out of here, I think it was. Something like that, anyways. Hey, pretty good. How you doing? Hey, you're, you're, uh, John from Fish Adventure. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good. You're good. Nice to meet you. I'm yeah, watching all your time. Me oh. and my buddy. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Tyler Kennedy. Uh, Oh, yeah, he was just messaging me. Yeah, we fish out okay. here a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for watching. I was using a 6.8 medium extra fast rod, and that medium extra fast is something I really like for the targeting bass and i'm probably gonna do a video on that coming up um it's a 2500 uh shimano nasi reel i got 15 pound um cast king braid high vis uh 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and um, i ended up with that little yum dinger 
But the main thing was getting that lure down in there, hooking up something kind of weedless where it can kind of bounce along the bottom. A jig may be really good. Um, some people are really big jig fishermen. I don't use a lot, but I bet that would work really good. A little crawl or any kind of thing that you can get in there and bounce along. I feel like that's where the bigger uh, fish are gonna be at, um, at least in the springtime. And then of course it changes throughout the year, but uh, some places are already like, you know, doing fishing is good. good. Some places are still got ice. So um, I, hopefully this helps somebody out and maybe they um, will give it a try and we'll catch more fish. But main thing is uh, spring is, is coming and uh, the, the fishing should start getting pretty good.